Angry Mad Money Man here. Yeah, I put the angry back on. Angry Mad Money Man here. That sounds right. And today we're discussing how a homeless man becomes a Bitcoin billionaire. Can we say baller, anyone? Can we say baller? So let's go ahead and just thank these patrons right here and just give special thanks to these patrons. Oh my gosh, this list, guys, this list just keeps on growing larger. It just keeps on, this list just keeps on growing larger by, by the day. By the day, it just keeps on growing larger. FYI, guys, I just want to let, I just want to like pour some water on it. The $50 tiers are also now sold out. Yes, you heard me right. The $50 tiers are also now sold out. Let me go ahead and add another name to this list. Yep. So guys, the $30 tiers are sold out and the $50 tiers are sold out and the $100 tiers are now are available. There's only 20 of those. And here, the thing is that don't forget, you get mentorship with those. So, I mean, I literally have to mentor each and every single person on that. Anyway, so here we're going to go ahead and thank Sharky, Mickey Turner, Rob Venturis, Hansky, Joshua Flores, Levi Abram. My gosh, this is a crazy list. RJ, Gabriel Prince, F.A. Crusader, Crusader, Scott Vemmen, Samir Damani, Midtown Kiosk, AWOL 201, David Hera, Goo Monster, Link Neurons, Thomas Danielle, John R., Fernando Grant, I.R. De La Costa, Brian Pierre Dramartel, Pierre Dramartel, I think I got that, Justin Spetz, E.B., Timothy Bruce Loiza, Will St <laughs> Wist uh, Winston Elliston, Chris Hustle, Jerry's Hazelwood, John Wright, Scipio Americanus, and Raymond Zun Zuniga. Okay, guys, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, this list is getting out of control. I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying. Uh, guys, look look at this. You've seen this list expand massively, massively over the course of a week. Just a week, guys. I want to be showing you how to set up your own patrons. Don't forget how to how to uh, how to do your own fan funding. And personally, I'm going to show you another method. Instead of using Patron, I'm going to show you another method where you can build your own site. This way, it, it gives you added protection. But we're going to be going into all of that. I'm going to teach you how to do this so that you can also benefit from this, so that you can also get out there and start getting this money. So today's topic is how a homeless man became a Bitcoin millionaire. Bitcoin millionaire. Remember I kept on warning you guys, like I said, I keep telling you the bull run is on the way. The bull run is on the way. Some of y'all don't listen. Don't forget that you can find the cryptocurrency course crypto uh, on CryptoMoney.Academy. Introduction to crypto where you're gonna learn everything you need to learn about cryptocurrency so that you can go out there and get my money. That's right, because I only make because I'm. You see, I need you know when 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 you guys buy a course from me, that's not you investing in my course. That's me investing in you. All right, that's me investing in you. All right, because you're gonna you're gonna go out there, and you're gonna get more money from me. All right, when you make money, I make money. So you're so so you're an invest so so you're you're an investment for me. You're an investment. Let's go ahead and read this article because this is a really interesting article. So Bitcoin put him on the street that made him a millionaire, made him a fortune. And this article was actually published on Digital Tr Tr Trends. So it's a really, it's a pretty well-known website, tech site. Okay, so much of the wealth created by cryptocurrency has been siphoned off by established tech entrepreneurs like the Will Calvis, Win, Win Voss, Twins, I can't, well, call these twins, okay, the Facebook twins, and Chris Larson's of the world, all right, who saw the upswing coming and had money to invest in it, you have gained the most. Ray, your, Ray Yosef, the, the co founder of Bitcoin Direct trade platform Paxful, is a little different. While he still exudes the self-driven, caviar attitude of many tech entrepreneurs, he sees himself as Robin Hood, not a slick Silicon Valley yuppie. Wow. Actually, being from New York, we have some we got we have choice words. So like, wow. Okay. 
Anyway, maybe that's because he has eaten out of dumpsters and slept on park benches. Wow. 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 Maybe that's because he has eaten out of dumpsters and slept on park benches before he founded one of the biggest cryptocurrency peer-to-peer -peer exchanges in the world. Yusuf was driven to homelessness by cryptocurrency. Now, guys, remember what I told you about consistency and persistence? That's discussed the last, the last lesson in the introduction to cryptocurrency. The last lesson, and I said that, and I said it, the most important lesson: consistency and persistence oh my gosh today Yusuf is a self-made Bitcoin success story oh gosh yet he claims that Paxful was never about making uh, money to him it's all about helping the little guy and giving back from his success specific specifically in the developing world he's a man who isn't afraid to disregard the rules if he sees them as unjust and his and his story is a microcosm of the broader conflict between success and res and responsibility that plagues silicon valley <coughs> beggar to bitcoin <laughs> oh my gosh so, born Ryam Abbas Yusuf, the eventual Paxil founder, began launching startups and unconventional ventures in the early 2000s. He headed up a successful polyphonic ringtone business called Matrix M, then founded a less successful social network and dating platform called Fun High. He also joined a movement to bring back Victorian era technology inspired by Nikola Tesla, had a stint as an actor, became an MMA fighter and changed his his name and changed his name first to Ray Savant then Muhammad Youssef along the way he now goes by Ray Youssef Ray Youssef oh gosh this is, this is something guys actually that kind of makes sense <clears throat> Clearly, Yusuf's not afraid to dive headfirst into new ideas and push them forward with his own brand of tenacity and personal belief. His attention turned towards cryptocurrency in 2012 when he posted his motorcycle for sale on an internet forum. One poster suggested he take payment in Bitcoin. I thought, Bitcoin? That's nerd money, Yusuf told Digital Threads with a chuckle. <clears throat> but I kept looking into it over a few months and I, and I really started to fall in love with the whole thing. The technology was amazing, but it was the passion of the community that really caught my eye. The, inf the infatuation with the community's drive is what led Yusuf to launch Easy Bits two years later with Arter Schwabach, a friend he met at a Bitcoin conference. The two would later go on to found Pax Paxful, but Easy Bits was, the was their first joint project. <clears throat> it served as a, payment as a payment provider for small business, street vendors, and independent artists, and was designed to make it easy for them to accept Bitcoin payments from customers. The company immediately ran into a small problem, however. No one wanted to use it. That was then, right? And so this is, oh, and this is, uh, this is Ryan. This is uh, Ryan Youssef, okay? This is Ryan Youssef. That's a picture of him. <clears throat> At the time, nobody really had any Bitcoin to spend, he admitted. As easy as we tried to make it, it was still too complex to use, and New York retailers were really not into that kind of thing. Not, perpet not perturbed by these early difficulties, all right, guys, not perturbed by these early difficulties, consistency and persistence. Boy, oh boy, Yusuf pushed forward even harder using the aggressive strategy of giving Bitcoin away in pre-made wallets. Even that didn't work. Wow, he was giving Bitcoin away. Guys, I remember being in Washington Square going to the musicians there saying, hey, you should accept Bitcoin donations. And I gave them this card with a barcode on it with instructions on how they could accept it, he said. It even came with $100 worth of Bitcoin, which would be, oh my goodness, which would be worth about 5000 or something like that. They refused it. No one would take it. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Guys, could you imagine one day 
when he said what if bitcoin goes to a million dollars like 10 20 like 10 20 years from now bitcoin's like at a billion dollars and the story goes out that this guy was once walking around handing out a bitcoin to ever had got like bitcoins to everyone like literally what would be considered a million dollars <laughs> Just 20 years ago, some guy was going around handing out what would eventually become worth a million dollars and people wouldn't take it. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. This story is insane, guys. This story is insane. <clears throat> Both Yusuf and Shabak pushed easy bid for a full year and soon found themselves up against a brick and wall brick wall. Money became scarce. Eventually, the peer couldn't make rent. Arthur crashed with his best friend George, and then a month later, I had to leave my place because my mother needed help, so I rented it out. Yusuf explained, <clears throat> for three months I was homeless and going from crash pad to crash pad, usually with girls from my past, and couch surfing. There were days at, at a time where I just decided to stay outside and wouldn't crash in the park. This is Wow. The resourcefulness that kept him moving from startup to startup kept him well fed during the, that time in his life, despite his poverty. I quickly figured out how I quickly figured out that being homeless in New York City meant you didn't ever have to go hungry at night, he said. I ate very well once I figured out where the best restaurants threw their trash. Oh my gosh! I ate very well once I figured out where the best restaurants threw their trash. <laughs> oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. FYI guys, don't forget I have eaten bread off the side of a road, all right? I have eaten bread off the side of the road, dumped off the side of the road, all right? I've had my, I've had I have a similar story to this. I mean, I'm not I mean, I'm not where he is yet, but man, oh man, wow. All right? I've lived that life. I have lived that life and rough too. All right. This is insane. The, <clears throat> we see here huge chunks of sashimi could be found in Tribeca in certain place. I discovered a never-ending supply of pizza dough at the Domino's Pizza and two Greek places in Moray Hill became weekly favorites with feta cheese salad, salad and some amazing fish leftovers. Oh my gosh. Although at the lowest point, although at the lowest point in his life financially, Yusuf said he turned down any financial donations while on the street. He had daytime work at cafes and continued to work on easy bits when possible. Guys, this is ambition. Then his business partner, Shebek, ran into a friend with an idea that would quickly put him back on his feet. Bitcoin at a premium in 2015, 2015 was still two years before Bitcoin reached its financial peak, <clears throat> but interest was growing. Many people were willing to pay a premium to own Bitcoin. This is interesting, guys. This is interesting. A friend of ours, Max, came to us and said, hey, you guys can actually sell $250 worth of Bitcoin and get a $500 PayPal My Cash gift card in exchange and just spend the profit with your PayPal Visa card, Yusef said. We looked, in, we looked at him and thought, why would anyone do that? You would have to forgive you. You would be forgiven for assuming that anyone willing to pay twice something's value using a digital service could be leveraging a stolen credit card or a hacked account to do so. But Yusuf insists this was not the case. Bitcoin was hard to get back then. Still, there was risk involved. He explains people were willing to effectively pay double the going rate for a Bitcoin purchase through PayPal because using a payment processor was notoriously dangerous for cryptocurrency sellers. Ah, PayPal's chargeback system allowed Bitcoin buyers to effectively scam the seller by sending a, a payment, receiving the, the uh, Bitcoin they bought, and then claiming they were scammed, prompting PayPal to return the funds used to purchase it. Due to Bitcoin's decentralized nature, there's no remediation process, leaving sellers out of pocket. Yusuf quickly began to turn a healthy profit by selling Bitcoin to PayPal purchasers, and soon, <clears throat> soon he and Shebek had turned their fortunes around. Though they even roped their friends in to effectively set up a business facilitating PayPal purchases of Bitcoin of, of cryptocurrency. 
There were limits to what the business could accomplish at that scale, however. Selling Bitcoin through Bitcoin Talk, that's, uh, that's actually the, the uh, Bitcoin forum that Satoshi Nakama created, uh, the Bitcoin creator, and local Bitcoins gave them a good start. But the sites weren't designed for low for volume trades, which made the process of buying and selling complicated. Yusuf saw the potential to launch his own cryptocurrency platform that became Paxful. Wow. Helping the unbanked. This is insane, guys. Paxful differed from its competitors by focusing on gift cards. Ooh. They had been used of salvation, and much like cryptocurrencies themselves, they can operate outside the existing structure of financial institutions. This makes them extremely valuable to people who don't have a bank account for depositing or sending money, the unbanked, as finance wants call them. Three months into Paxful's operation, he received a call from someone in dire straits. Arthur and I were working in Soho 2 a.m. That's, I think, is that Lower Manhattan or Queens? I forget. <clears throat> and uh, it's, I haven't been to New York in so many years. It's been like almost 10 years now. No, seven. All right, anyway. So Arthur, or is it six? I don't know. Arthur and I were working in Soho 2 a.m. or so it was late, Yusuf said. We had put our number on the website and no one ever called. But all of a sudden, I got a call and it was this woman. She said, I need some Bitcoin. I need it. I'm down to my last $13. She was frantic, telling me how her kids were going to be homeless the next day if she doesn't get this Bitcoin. This might seem hyperbole indeed. The fanaticism over people's desire to buy Bitcoin at its 2017 peak was certainly overblown, but it turned out that the woman had a very real reason, a real need to buy some Bitcoin. <clears throat> she needed it to post an advert on Backpage, Yusuf explained, a site notorious facilit for facilitating prostitution. The classified site's shady reputation caused MasterCard and Visa to pull out of processing transactions for it, but the site still accepted Bitcoin. The problem, however, was that getting hold of Bitcoin wasn't easy, particularly if you didn't have a bank account. He said, I had to walk her through it, so... I had to walk her through it. She was so angry. She spent eight hours going around the internet, every Bitcoin site trying to get one and couldn't do it because of all the Bitcoin sites you had to, you had to have a bank account. Wow. Yusuf told Digital Trends, this was a completely unbanked person in the United States. So I asked her, how were you buying these ads before? She said she bought gift cards in the drugstore. For the next three months, every single day, we would get calls, mostly women, who were looking for Bitcoin, Yusef said. Mostly women, guys. Do you guys remember when I told you that uh, adult actresses were making a, a lot, were becoming rich off cryptocurrency? And I told, and I said that there's these specific cryptocurrencies that you should invest in that have actually partnered up within the adult industry. Uh, you know, I, like I said, a number of people that I've told about these coins have already invested large amounts of money. If you want to find out what those coins are, you can go and join my you can go and join patron uh there's a there's about um you can join the, all the, the, the 30 dollar spots the 30 dollar crypto tier is sold out the 50 dollar crypto tier is sold out there is an 100 dollar crypto tier there are 20 spots available on that so go and get one of those spots before that sells out after those sell out the only other spots available will be the 500 dollar spots yes 500 dollar spots Okay, so if you are, if you want to, I mean, but you get a lot for a hundred dollars. You absolutely get coaching and a, and you get a call and all this other great stuff. So yeah, but anyway, go and sign up if you want to get in. If you want to find out what those coins are, because I, I literally do all the work for you. I tell you what coins to buy, what coins I suggest. Uh, but and of course, I cannot endorse. But I can basically say these are the coins that I've been buying and they're working for me. And I give you the reasons. I do all the hard. I do all the homework for you. I tell you where to go and pick them up. I even show. I give you the links. All right. All. I mean, I do all the hard work for you guys. I do. I do the lifting. So definitely go and check that out if you want to find out what coins. Because as you can see, I said that Bitcoin was going to be a big deal among women. I said crypto was going to be a big deal among women. People don't listen to me. Yusuf said they were all in desperate situations, but the beauty of the entire episode is that it helped us get our product market fit. If someone had a bank account, they can easily use Coinbase. But if you don't have a bank account or are on bank, Paxful is the place to go. 
place you go to. Yusuf remains unapolog unapologetically proud of Paxful's start. Despite the hot water Backpage eventually ended up in, Backpage came under fire in 2017 for its anything goes attitude and the posting of classified adverts for sex work ultimately resulted in the site seizure for by multiple US federal agencies. Seven people associated with Backpage, including its founders, have been indicted on charges that include money laundering and facilitating prostitution. The free market will win in the end, and we do believe there are many lawmakers looking for a better way. You see here? Better known as the Allow State and Victims to Fight Online Sex Trafficking Act allows authorities to hold sites liable for misuses their, of their classifieds and forces Craig, and force Craigslist to shutter its own personals when it passed Congress earlier this year. Yusuf said he supports the new law as ideas but, worry, but worried that it could do more damage than good. Sex trafficking is indeed a problem that should be handled with all the resources of the state, he stated, yet the ramifications of this bill have clearly thrown an entire community into disarray, putting single mothers in, jep, in, in serious jeopardy. Well, very interesting. As you as you have sees it, the best thing anyone can do, whether business owner, whether okay, so guys, I did guys. So basically, I don't know if you understand what's actually going on here. A lot of his customers were women who evidently worked. You know, it sounds like they were working on Backpage. All right, they were involved with Backpage and providing services through Backpage. And when they and many of them did not have bank accounts, or they did not have a, a way of, uh, or they had no other. Or, or, no, no, no. They had no way of actually paying. They had no way of actually paying because Backpage was accepting crypto, Bitcoin. So they, uh, so they were turning to this so that they could pay for their listings on Backpage. Very interesting, right? Very, very interesting. They were turning to Backpage so they can pay for their listings on Backpage so they can offer their services on Backpage. And uh, guys, did I not tell you that crypto card that this is how cryptocurrency becomes big? All right, did I not tell you this is how big how cryptocurrency would become? It was like I mean, this would usher it in. It always this type of this is how it always gets ushered in. All right, and people are people. My guys, my history. People who've been with me for years have been following me for years can see that I have a very good track record. I, and I've said it constant times that I'm not a prophet. I've said it over and over. I'm not a prophet, all right? Said it, I am not a prophet. But I do hope God is speaking through me, and I do use common sense and 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 um and and, and obvious trends, like trends, things that are happening to make my predictions. But it's so so funny. Some of you have said already. I've heard some of you say before. Well, the thing am is that common sense is kind of uh, common sense is kind of hard to come by these days, you know. And I, I understand that. I definitely understand when you say that. But yeah, guys, I mean, it's not it's not a joke. It's not a joke right now. <clears throat> right now, there is a lot of create. There is a lot of difficult things happening out there. There's a lot of crazy things happening out there in this world. And you have to be aware of that. But this article is pretty interesting. As Yusuf sees it, the best thing anyone can do, whether business owner, government, or individual, is to try and improve the day to day life and try to improve the day to day lives of everyday people. He remains adamant that Paxful has accomplished that and sees confident that even after the passage of HR 1865, lawmakers will ultimately reconsider. This isn't the kind of day to day difference we wanted to see, Yusuf told Digital Trends, but the free market will win in the end, and we do believe there are many lawmakers looking for a better way. Bitcoin Beyond Borders. Today, Paxful is a direct trade platform with a claimed user base of 1.5 million customers. It trades thousands of Bitcoins a month, moving Bitcoins, moving millions of dollars through the site on a regular basis. Many of those users do so from all over the world and it's those international markets that he have Yusef so excited he sees those markets as even greater as an even greater need of the financial fluidity that cryptocurrency offers often transactions still rely on gift cards and and that kickstarted the whole venture iTunes is very special is a very special case you said you have said it's how most of Nigeria and Africa get their bitcoins right now on Paxful 11 million dollars of iTunes gift cards go from Nigeria to China every Every week 
While this remains a con- convoluted way to exchange cash, Yusuf thinks it's a better solution that financials and financial institutions for those in uh, in vulnerable situations. Okay. In Nigeria, for example, these folks prefer to keep their money in crypto, Yusuf explained. So even in the fall of cryptocurrencies, some of them would who some of them who bought it at the beginning of the year are still up several hundred percent in Nigeria. Their local currency has fallen ninety percent in the past two years, so their neighbors would be down forty percent for the year. My goodness. Yusuf explained that where Western markets often see Bitcoin as a purely as a, as purely a store of value as a way of investing in growing wealth elsewhere in the world, it's more commonly used as a means of payment. Guys, remember why I said go invest in Africa? But people don't listen. Independent businesses in Africa are some of the biggest proponents leveraging Paxful and Bitcoin to improve their fortunes, much as Yusuf himself had. Guys, I told you that come 2029, Africa is, is predicted to finally achieve self-sustainability, meaning that they will no longer have to import food to feed themselves. They'll be growing their own food. They'll be raising their own cattle. They will be self-sustainable. All right? That is the first step to becoming a developing, to becoming developing. Now, here's the interesting thing. We said Africa. I didn't say Nigeria. I didn't say Ghana. I said Africa. The continent of Africa will become self-sustainable. The continent. There are multiple different countries in Africa, all right? Just like there are multiple different countries in Europe. This presents major, major opportunities as all as numerous, as many of these countries are now going to go from third world countries to developing nations. And it's in developing nations where the most opportunity is for developing markets to, to uh, start a business, start a franchise, you know, offer products and services. This is where the real opportunity is. It's not a joke. And you're going to see money flowing in internationally, overseas, into these countries. There's so much opportunity because these are, you know, these are, these are, it's basically countries, oceans where the waters have not been thread yet. You know, there's, there's all this op- there's all this opportunity there's all this opportunity to make money all right so you guys have to be on top of that you can you guys cannot be asleep you can't sleep at the wheel you got to jump on you've got to make got to make up your mind if you want to get on this if you want to have a future if you want to do something different with your with your lives because guys as you can see this guy was a this guy was homeless and even homeless, he didn't give up. Even homeless, he kept pushing forward, all right? Guys, don't forget that I've created a cryptocurrency course for you guys. Introduction to cryptocurrency. There's going to be other courses as well at CryptoMoney.Academy. The link to the website is in the description of the video. And if all you have to do is click on Courses to head over to the Courses section, then you can click on Introduction to Cryptocurrency. You can click on Buy This Course. It's only $100. It'll be going up to about 149 very soon, and then 500 and, but you can get it for, for just $100 right now. This course sells for thousands at universities or even much more since they only sell one lesson. They, they make one lesson into one course. And by the end of the course, you'll be able to understand how cryptocurrency works, how to purchase and use cryptocurrency, how to store cryptocurrency, and different kinds of cryptocurrency. You can check out the curriculum. You're going to learn what is cryptocurrency. You're going to learn about the technology behind blockchain and distributed ledger. You're going to learn what gives cryptocurrency value. You're going to learn about how cryptocurrency is created. Is it, is it created through mining? You're going to learn how to store cryptocurrency so this is everything from hardware wallets to paper wallets to, and you know cold difference between cold storage you're going to learn all of that uh, you're going to learn about using cryptocurrency and purchasing cryptocurrency so for example you a lot of people end up getting scammed because they don't know how to properly purchase cryptocurrency so they try going to this exchange and that exchange some are some are valid many aren't you're going to learn how to properly purchase it you're going to learn how to properly use it you're going to learn how to properly store it uh, you're also going to get an introduction to decentralized applications which is the backbone technology of cryptocurrency that most people don't know about so you're going to go you're going to be ahead of the curve you're going to learn about crypto on the internet of things about how so that's basically uh, things like smart thermostats uh, you know your Google home smart speakers how that stuff and uh, many other devices and how they interact with cryptocurrency and they can help to protect your information from hackers and so forth I mean very soon your operating the operating system that we use on our computers may be may utilize blockchain technology to protect us from hacks.
You're also going to learn about issue. You're also going to learn about initial coin offerings, what they are, how to how to participate. Should you participate? What the legality is? Because that's very important, and what the risks are as well. Because I've lost thousands in initial coin offerings, but I've also made thousands in initial coin offerings. You're, <clears throat> also, you're going to learn about the different kinds of cryptocurrency. What are equity coins? What are security coins? What are utility? To what are utility tokens? You're going to learn about that. You need to know the difference. And guess what? Bitcoin and Ethereum. They're, they're none of those three. So you have to understand what they are. So you understand. So you can understand. You know the risks, the rewards, the benefits, or if you want to avoid certain coins altogether. All right. You're also going to learn cryptocurrency investing strategies. This is where you're going to learn how to actually trade instead of trying to jump in there without act without knowing nothing. And finally, you're going to learn the importance of consistency and persistence this is so important all right as i said this is the most important lesson in this entire thing and you can see that from the article that we just read this guy's consistency and his persistence got him to that point all right he was homeless and he still didn't give up all right he was homeless and he still had not given up he still kept pushing forward so guys that's what you have to do you have to have that you have to you have to understand that nothing comes easy in life you have to put in the hard work and you cannot give up you cannot give up you cannot let yourself go you have to say i'm going this is this is for me and i'm going to go and get it that's all there is to it. The course is $100. You can find it again on CryptoMoney.Academy. The link is in the description of the video. Do it for yourself. Do it today. Don't stall because again, the price is going to go up, and you don't want to be—you don't want to get into cryptocurrency late. You don't want to be that guy who gets in the gets in when it's already when it's already shooting up, and you're like, "Oh, that was the great time to get in." No, 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 bro. All right, if you had gotten in, if you had gotten in even a week earlier, all right, you would, you know, you would, you would have turned a hundred dollars into a, in, in, into ten thousand. Come on, come on. All right, stop fooling yourself. Your time, your time has gone. Your time is coming gone. All right, you're not one of those people who are trying to get on to get on while you know trying to trying to get it at the at the last at the last minute hoping and you know what's happening right now i'm going to be selling to you all right i'm going to be selling my over i'm going to be selling my 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 overvalued coins as a on a premium to you on a premium to you all right I'm gonna be selling my overvalued. Uh, I'm gonna sell my overvalued coins uh, on a premium to you, and you're gonna buy them from me too. You're gonna buy them from me and say thank you. You're gonna say thank you. All right. So just so so keep it by. So either you you can learn about crypto now, you can get on the train right now, or you can go and you can buy my overpriced coins later on and say thank you, thank you, sir, thank you, sir. <laughs> Because <sighs> I won't get your money now. I won't get it later. One way or another. One way or another, bro. One way or another. All right, you're gonna pay me. One way or another, you're gonna pay. You're gonna pay me. I'm just letting. I'm just being honest about it. So you're real honest about it. All right. Honesty is my best policy. <laughs> Let me see what you guys are saying. The only place in Africa I'd go. Okay, so you guys are. You guys are crazy. Let me see here. Mickey is in the chat. He says, "Of course, South Africa may screw that up." Again, it's a big country. Africa is a now it's a big continent. It's not a con Africa is a big continent, not a country. There are multiple countries in Africa. So at the end of the day, I you can really see that there's a lot of opportunity there for growth. Uh, Black Eagle says, thankfully, I never had to eat discarded food when I was homeless. I ate, bro, I ate bag off this. I ate bread off the side of the road. I shared a bottle with a guy who looked like he had her, looked like he had HPV or hepatitis. And I like, yeah, and like I've been tested at everything, but it was I was so thirsty. His like face was covered in these bumps, and I just and he offered me some water that he's like, oh, it's good, and I drank it. I was just that. I just needed the water so bad. I thought I was going to die. All right. I thought I was going to die. So yeah, you lived through, and at the time, like it might have, I think it was right around that time when there was like this tuberculosis outbreak, and all these homeless people were dying from TB. It was the guys. It was it was it was not. It wasn't the best of times and the worst of times. It was the worst of times. It was the worst of times. You know what's funny? I spoke to my stepfather like like what like after that whole thing happened, and like the first thing he basically told me was like not to ask, was basically that uh, not to ask him for any money. It was like guys, it was like the it was like such a horrible thing. Like I didn't ask, I never asked him for money. I didn't ask him for any money. But like I spoke to him like I like after I had gotten off the street, I spoke to my stepfather, and my stepfather is uh he's a he's a 
he's a pat <laughs> my stepfather is a pastor okay are you guys happy now my stepfather is a pastor okay he's a he's a he's a chaplain my stepfather is a chaplain and uh, he's a chaplain and uh yeah i spoke to him after i got off the street and i told him and bef and before i can tell him what happened he still tell he starts telling me like basically don't ask him for any money because he doesn't have it it was so horrible so horrible and this is like yeah guys i'll tell you i'll tell you you find you find out who people really are when you get older you find out who people really are and who family really is you know and you know i always thought my stepfather i always thought he cared about me really cared about me my, my biological father never really gave a damn but uh i always thought he cared and uh, I, guys you find out who people are especially when money is involved and even I didn't even ask for any. I didn't even ask for any. He didn't even know what became of me. But that's how it is, guys. That's why you have to do what's right for you. You have to uh, you have to take care of yourself. You have to you have to make sure that you are putting money away. You are investing in your future because no one else is going to invest in your future. No one else is going to have your back. No one else is going to be there for you. All right. And let me tell you guys something. Those streets can be so cold. Boy, oh boy, those streets can be cold. All right. So if you want to avoid, if you want to, if you want to start making money for yourself, if you want to start investing in your future, not someone else's future, your future, then go ahead and pick up the, pick up that, uh, pick up the tutorial, pick up the course at cryptomoney.academy, pick up the course, begin learning how to work with cryptocurrency, how it works, get, you know, cause you have to know the rules before you can play the game. All right. You gotta know the rules before you can play the game. You gotta know the rules before you can play the game. I know, I know, I'm cheesy. Malcolm Jaffe says 2008 was terrible. Yeah, Doctor Big Tal says I did not like 2008. Guys, 2008. So that was when we had our when we had the Great Recession, which was really a depression because we never got out of it. All right. This is some rough. Oh, Nikki Turner says I'm talking about the farmers being evicted from about the uh some south africans being evicted from their farms ah yeah there's some crazy stuff going on over there right now that yeah you're right about that they, that is really problematic that is very very problematic trump did say he would be looking into it hopefully something happens in regards to that right now all right so guys let me know what you think all right don't forget and guys don't forget that if you want to find out the coins that i'm investing in the coins that i that are actually becoming very well used among things like the adult adult among adult entertainers that privacy coins that a lot of people have invested in they've joined my patron and they have invested in them go over to my patron join now there is uh last i checked there was about 20 spots left open for the hundred dollar tier the fifty dollar tier is sold out the thirty dollar tier is sold out there's only 20 spots left for the hundred for the hundred dollar tier and after those fill up uh it's gonna be it's five hundred dollars a person it's five hundred dollars a person all right but you know that there's also there's a lot of benefits on that five hundred dollar plan now some of you are going to say, yeah, you're 500. Think about this carefully. I'm mentoring on the $50 tier. I am now mentoring 10 people. I am coaching 10 people doing regular call, doing calls every month with 10 people. All right. And on the $20 plan, that's another, on the $100 tier, that's another 20 people all right so that's that would be third that's 30 clients right there that i have to speak to every single month that i am coaching i'm actively involved in their lives working on their business to ensure that they actually succeed and set up their business all right so that they are successful so that's a lot of work on my part so that if you're wondering well why so why why the next plan up is 500 that's the reason why because this is a lot of work this is a lot of work but at the 500 dollars plan you also get more anyway guys let me know what you guys think about this if you're if you're impressed with the fact that a homeless man became a millionaire a bitcoin millionaire and can now you can you now really understand how consistency and persistence truly make that big of a difference can really make that big of a difference someone said you met your 100 subscriber goal 
Who are you talking to? I don't know who you're talking All right. All right. Anyway, guys. So, like I said, CryptoMoney.Academy to sign up for the Cryptocurrency 101 course to learn how to play the game, how to purchase cryptocurrency. Also, don't forget to sign up for the one for the patron plan where you can uh, for my plan on Patreon where you can now become where you can get monthly updates coaching every i mean so much for me a regular uh regular goal list there's a like you can check it out for yourself you know and working towards setting up your business and beco becoming the best version of yourself all right because let me tell you something poverty is not is no joke living in poverty is no joke po it's a terrible thing it's a terrible thing all right i do not like it and i would never want i would never wish homelessness on my worst enemy I said that before, I would never wish homelessness on my worst enemy. And homelessness can happen to anyone. You hear me, hear me and hear me well. Those of you listening to this video, homelessness can happen to anyone. Anyone. Love God, get money, and cheers.